first, can you tell us what's Rilso? Oh, Rilso, uh, thank you, uh, Fleet, for having me here today. I'm very excited to be here. And the Rilso is um, the Region Legal Service Office, and we provide legal services for our dependents and our DOD civilians, and uh, of course, retirees and active duty service members. Okay, so when, when you talk about services, when you talk about the real so services that you offer to the group you just mentioned, active duty, reserve, family members, DOD civilians and their family members, what kind of services are there? I mean, uh, when I walk into real so, what can I get from you? Well, for us, our primary and our, you know, our huge service is the, our legal assistance mission, which is very huge. Uh, we provide assistance with uh, wills, family law, consumer law, powers of attorney, notary services. We do. We have an attorney that that comes once a week where we where we provide Italian law legal assistance. Oh wow! As well as claims, um, we will also um, we will also agree uh, review agreements contracts so that if the service member or their families or dear civilians they don't understand it we will help them to understand it although we don't give advice we just make sure that the verbiage in the contract is as accurate and correct so okay let's talk now about being overseas and here we are in Italy uh, and we have the SOFA agreement which is the status of forces agreement and it talks about the status of forces and how we operate as a military unit in our dependence working here in a military capacity and having to also follow the local law. So it's not like we have immunity, you know, because we're on a military installation and wearing, you know, the uniform of a military member. So we still have to follow our host national laws, right? Yes, we do. Okay. And so what happens with what's in the SOFA agreement and what do we need to know about it? Not the specific laws, but... Well, first, the laws apply to everyone. So the members of the armed forces... Our civilians working here, um, our civilian contractors, and of course our dependents. So it applies to everyone. Um, and the main reason that um, everyone should, you know, become familiar with the uh, SOFA and Italian laws um, is because we frequent this area. Everyone travels, and if there is ever an incident um, with Italian authorities you must kind of have a little, you should have a little bit of knowledge about it. Now we cover it in our area orientation brief and we also, we're more than willing to have you come over to our legal assistance office if you have any questions and we discuss it more. Um, and we also have, like I said, an Italian attorney there to help um, just, you know, if you do encounter um, an incident with Italian authorities. So while you're overseas legally and you're legally bound to also obey the host nation laws, and if you are uh, encountering uh, authorities in your host nation, it's also important to have the phone numbers for uh, your military translators, your assistants, and so forth. So we have, you know, each base has their uh, business card size, you know, phone numbers. So for every sailor, for every uh, dependent civilian out there, um, I would encourage them to make sure they have that card on their person when they're traveling as well so if they do encounter uh, legal authorities or have some questions while they're out in town they have that resource to call back to. Surveys are critical and so even if you know you get a survey this week and then a different survey next week it's critical that every time you receive a survey request to participate in that you participate because without the survey we don't hear your voice. Nope. And, you know, we're, we're out in the field and we're out on travel and we'll do all hands calls. And, and for us in the Navy, a sailor may say, well, how does this policy change? Or why am I wearing this uniform? You know, I, I wish somebody had asked me about it. And then we'll ask them, well, you received the survey, right? And, well, yeah, I received the survey. And so when we ask, well, what did you put on the survey? Did you put these kinds of things, you know, that you're talking about? well, I didn't do the survey, I didn't have time, or, you know, they, I had other things to do, or I saw it in my mailbox and I meant to get to it, but I didn't do it. So if you're relying on other people in your branch of service to do that survey, then you are giving them your, you know, opportunity to speak for you. Uh, and we see it all the time. When you are filling those surveys out, you are legally bound to be honest yeah. in that survey. So for a BAH or an OHA survey that comes out, 
and it says put here how much you're paying for your power on average and what they're looking for and they'll tell you in the survey take your last three or your last six power bills and you know take the average and put that in here so I get feedback from a lot of sellers that will say oh I didn't fill out that survey because I didn't have my power bill I didn't save it or I'd have to go back and look online to see what I wrote for my checks and so forth well you can do that you know, if that takes a little time, you get the survey, you typically have 30 to 45 days, then take that four or five days that you need, go back and look at your bank statements, go back and look at how you wrote a check or you were paying online. It's critical that you invest that time in you, but it's just as critical to know that you're investing the time in your shipmate. And those that have gone before us did the survey to make things better for us. If I could leave you with no other advice, always leave your service in better shape than what you received it in. And that doesn't mean you received it in bad shape, but it means that you should leave it in better shape because people who came before us did. They took the surveys. So if only 11% of the Navy takes a survey, then the other 89% have given them permission to speak on their behalf. Don't wait for things to happen to you. Make them happen for you.